to the police vans down on 12th Street where people were walking home from a night out and witnessed the police pushing their neighbors into the paddy wagons. And Bill Scott hollered, are we gonna let these pecker woods come down here anytime they want and mess us around? And the people shouted, hell no! And Bill Scott, the son of the operator, the blind pig, said he threw the first bottle at the police, and the shit was on. And word of the rebellion spread up 12th Street up Linwood Avenue, up Dexter, all the way to Grand River. And by Sunday afternoon, all over town, whole families climbed through A&P windows and picked the stores clean, carting home the free groceries, free furniture and color TVs, guitars and leather coats, shoes, and clothes and liquor. Get the big stuff. And when their energies turned from smashing the stores, they would go for the police, the dirty, rotten, hated police from the criminal 10th precinct, which would become famous later as the center of a heroin distribution gang operated by the police. The Detroit police, more than 4,000 strong, of which 95% were white men, and the black officers totaled less than 50. Or as the NAACP put it in 1965, the Negroes in Detroit feel they are part of an occupied country. The Negroes have no rights, which the police have to respect. It would appear that the average policeman looks upon the Negro as a criminal type. But the police force couldn't contain the rebellion. And 
8,000 Michigan Army National Guardsmen, almost 100% white men from outstate Michigan, were deployed with their tanks on the streets of Detroit, followed by 4,700 paratroopers from both the 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions, plus 360 Michigan State Police officers. They placed the city under curfew and started rounding up suspects until more than 7,200 citizens had been taken off the streets and stuffed into the jails, held in the bathhouse at Belle Isle, shipped to Jackson Prison, 80 miles away in buses. Murray. at the Algiers Motel, the most fully documented of all the police atrocities committed during the rioting. Oh, there was, there was no rioting at the Algiers Motel, except for the police terrorism unleashed upon the victims. This was a rebellion, an uprising against racial oppression segregated housing, the greedy landlords and businessmen who controlled their environment, the denial of economic opportunity, the refusal to provide proper education, and the relentless persecution by the police. No relief in sight. Nothing to look forward to. No way to get ahead. Why not burn the fear of the of